I think if we get people who are in this business, whether they're in the Space Force and do military work or in the, the, the government civil side of things at NASA or elsewhere, I know there are people that care about this kind of thing, usually not in the military, unfortunately. But if we can start to cage our minds on some of these ideas, then maybe we start to think about this in ways that can be useful in the years ahead, rather than it's just this uh, this fleeting phenomenon we were exposed to that's a part of history, but not necessarily a part of our imminent future. I think that a couple of things we could comment there. I think that, yes, uh, I think clearly what, what the, the record shows the geological, paleontological, archaeological record shows is that there are these repeated interruptions within the continuum of change. And the, you know, the most, in my mind, the most likely uh, trigger for these interruptions is cosmic um, impact. But it's also, you know, I use the term exogenic, which means from outside. So that the, the primary trigger for these is exogenic in origin. But I think there's also can be a very powerful endogenic response so that we mentioned this in our first conversation that that impacts, you know, may also trigger uh, extended episodes of volcanism. Um, they may be responsible for, and this goes back to the work of uh, Fred Hoyle and Chandra Wickramasinghe, who theorized really even back in the 70s and 80s that it might have been impact type events responsible for bringing the uh, for the onset of an ice age and the global cooling. And then that that idea was picked up by Klub, Napier, Asher, and those guys of the British Neocatastrophist School who came to believe that, you know, they used the term cosmic winter. And it was interesting that back in the early 80s, you, of course, have heard the term nuclear winter. That was when it was realized by scientists that there would be very crossover type of similarities between an all-out nuclear war and a cosmic impact. With the difference being nuclear war, you're going to have the radiation component, which you're not going to have. However, we know from Tunguska that, you know, the, uh, the ozone layer can be dramatically depleted in an impact, which would then allow more uh, cosmic radiation to reach the surface of the Earth that's usually being buffered by the ozone. So there could be that whole level of consequences also to a cosmic impact event. But there's the similarities, the fire, the dust injected into the atmosphere that increases the opacity of the atmosphere and the reflectivity of it so that thermal energy coming in from the sun is reflected back to space, calling a, causing a cooling on the surface, and that this could lead to these, might be what's triggering some of these rapid climate changes. And now, with the advent of the Younger Dryas, it really does look like we can see the onset of a cosmic winter coinciding precisely within uh which i believe to be a series of impacts i don't think we can explain the younger driest events by a single impact but we know now that those things are feasible we we witnessed it for ourselves in 1994 with the the multiple 21 impacts on uh, the jovian surface within one year i mean within within one week of july 1994 and I think that that was another important cosmic lesson. I kind of looked that there's a number of these things that have taught us things that are really critical for us to understand the nature of this larger environment in which we find ourselves. And we have to start thinking in those terms, that we are part of a cosmic ecosystem.